We have been talking about various fundamental theories of axial flow turbines. So, by now you are aware that axial flow turbines in modern aircraft engines, typically in gas turbine engines in aircraft usage and of course, those which are used in uh, land based uh, gas turbines which are indeed much larger. The all turbines that are used, actual turbines that are used are essentially multi stage turbines. That means, there are more than one stage lined up one after another just like multi stage compressors to supply sufficient amount of aggregate power to the compressors. Now, in case of uh, land based gas turbines, the entire power that is generated by the multi stage turbine is used in compressors or for taking out power for uh, grid power generation, electrical power generation. In case of aircraft engine, the multi staging is done for a number of uh, purposes. It still has to supply power to the compressor it can also supply power to the propeller as it used to do in the early days of uh, gas turbine plus propeller that is turboprops, many of which of course, are indeed still around. And then of course, it supplies power to the fan or the big fan as most of the present aero engines are which are turbofans. So, turbines uh, actually supply power to all of them the propellers the fans, the compressors and in the process of this uh, supply of power, it is necessary that certain amount of aggregate power is indeed created by the turbine and when that aggregate power creation requirement is more than a certain amount, you have to go for multi staging. Now, in terms of our understanding, we may say that there are certain criterion related to the gas turbine uh, parameters that we have been talking about, the pressure ratios of uh, compressors and turbines that we have been talking about. And with reference to those parameters, we can say that certain numbers once they are exceeded, we would need to go for multi staging. Today, we will also be looking at multi spooling. Now, multi staging and multi spooling are two different things. You can have a multi stage turbine which is a single spool turbine. On the other hand, you can have multi spool turbine which have to be necessarily multi stage, but multi spool as we have seen in case of actual compressors. They are two different groups of compressors running on two shafts at different rotational speeds or RPMs. Now, that requires a different mechanical arrangement to be introduced into the overall engine configuration. So, that obviously requires far more people to agree to the business of multi spooling. So, we will be talking a little about multi spooling also in today's class as part of multi staging and we shall also talk a little about how this multi spool arrangement of turbines needs to be fundamentally matched to the multi spool or multi stage compressors. When you have multi spooling, each spool independently needs to be matched to the corresponding compressor and we will have a quick look at the fundamental relations or fundamental uh, considerations that go into that matching between compressor and turbine to affect finally, multi spool arrangement. So, these are the things that we will be doing in today's class that is multi staging and multi spooling. There are a number of uh, criterion or considerations based on which multi staging and multi spooling is normally uh, adopted for modern actual flow uh, turbines. Uh, which are normally part of uh, overall gas turbine engine. Uh, let us look at some of these uh, fundamental considerations that go into uh, 
adoption or selection of multi stage uh, configuration for actual flow turbines. So, the considerations that normally go into multi staging and multi spooling to begin with let us look at the multi staging requirements. Normally, it comes from the aggregate amount of shaft work that needs to be produced. Now, as I mentioned this shaft work includes the work that needs to be supplied to compressor, that work that needs to be supplied to fan and or work that needs to be supplied to a propeller. In case of a land based uh, gas turbine engine, uh, the shaft that needs to be supplied uh, to compressor and work that supply needs to be supplied to the uh, external uh, power generation unit uh, would have to be supplied from the uh, turbine. Now, so the overall work that needs to be done by the turbine needs to be uh, assessed and computed and on the basis of that the multi staging arrangement needs to be decided upon. Now, to begin with if the turbine pressure ratio requirement is more than 2.5 and in a modern one a little more than 3, typically multi staging would be uh, resorted to, because a single stage turbine can give you pressure ratio or pressure drop of the order of 2.5 and you can probably stretch it to 3, but anything more than that uh, typically you would need to in a commercial engine you would need to resort to multi staging. On the other hand, the compression ratio over the years of gas turbine engines have kept on increasing and as a result to supply that much of aggregate power to run a multi stage compressor, a multi staging of turbine has also become inevitable, especially in the aero engines and more so in the land based gas turbine engines, which are anyway much bigger than the aero engines and they are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and in them multi staging is almost an inevitable uh, result of the present configurations. Now, the number of uh, stages of course, would have to be uh, a round number an integer and that has to be decided by the state of art of the turbine design in the sense the first stage is you know in the aero engines typically likely to be cool turbine. So, it may take uh, you know more uh, pressure ratio or work done in the uh, following stages they may not be cooled in which case they may do lesser pressure uh, ratio or pressure drop uh, and the work uh, uh, done. So, the split between the stages would have to be decided and integer numbers of stages would have to be uh, decided upon, uh, so that you have one or two or three uh, stages in which the total amount of work is accomplished. So, this is how multi staging is typically uh, resorted to. Now, let us take a look at why and how multi spooling is done. Now, multi spooling is necessary if the compressors have split in more than one spool. Uh, most of the modern engines actually are two spool engines, uh, two shaft engines. There are of course, quite a few which are already three shaft or three spool engines. Uh, now, the spooling is something which is decided by the engine designer or engine configuration and as we have done uh, before uh, and as we may have mentioned before in case of compressors that uh, the two spools uh, run at two completely different rpms. For example, uh, one of the spools may be running at 7000 rpm, another spool may be running at 10000 rpm. If it is a military engine, the one of the spools may be running at 10,000 rpm, the other one may be running at 16,000 rpm. So, this is something which is decided uh, by the engine designer and then a certain amount of uh, matching between the turbine and the compressor is necessary spool wise uh, to decide upon the split of work, the split of uh, pressure ratio and of course, the speed or the rpm at which each of these individual spool should be running. So, that is something which is decided uh, in a much larger manner bringing into uh, reckoning 
the uh, design and the features of the compressor or for that matter if it is going out to an external uh, generator. So, those things would have to be decided taking into account units other than the turbines as well. Now, if you, you, if you have a turboprop engine which is uh, a, a gas turbine plus a propeller to power an aircraft, a multi spooling is often uh, necessary or uh, sorted to. So, that the propeller has a, a, a set of turbines or at least a turbine to supply power uh, to the propeller through normally a gearbox. So, when the particular shaft is hooked to a gearbox, um, its speed would have to be uh, controlled through the gearbox to supply uh, a lower rpm to the propeller. Now, this is an arrangement which is typically necessary for turboprop engines and this allows the other spool that means, the turbine compressor combination uh, to run at a different rpm normally at a higher rpm and as a result as we have seen before you can have a, a spool of turbine compressor and combustion chamber uh, which is often called the core of the engine. So, that allows the spools to run at different speeds and it allows a core engine to be uh, configured or decided upon uh, which is a combination of compressor, turbine and uh, combustion chamber. So, some of these are decided upon not only by the turbine designer, but by the engine designer and taking into account many factors that come into the engine design. Now, most of the modern aero engines are indeed actually at least two spool. There are actually very few one spool engine these days. Uh, very small engines can be one spool, but moment it acquires a certain size, most designers uh, would like to go for two spool. It has a number of inherent advantages. One of the things that we have talked about uh, while talking about compressors is that if you run uh, one of the spools at a lower spool, notably the first set of compressors that is the low pressure compressor at a lower rpm and then allow the second set of compressor that is the HP or high pressure uh, spool to run at a higher speed, then the high pressure compressor can supply uh, compression at in a steady manner and deliver it to the combustion chamber. Now, that spool of compressor would have to be run by the high pressure turbine which uh, takes uh, the gas straight from the combustion chamber and then runs it at a high speed. So, the combination is that the inner turbine and the inner compressor of a gas turbine engine run at high speeds and at a steady high speed. Whereas, the outer spool that is of the compressor and of the turbine that is the front set of compressors and the rear set of turbines run at a lower speeds. Now, front set of turbines do actually have to face as we have discussed the some of the non uniformities and some of the uh, changes of the atmosphere from which the air is coming into the compressor. Similarly, the rear set of turbines or the LP turbines would have to face the uh, varying uh, changes of the uh, gas state uh, as it is going through the nozzle and to the atmosphere. So, rear set of turbines are also uh, kind of uh, subject to certain change of state uh, from the rear of the engine. So, from the front of the engine and from the rear of the engine certain changes of state of the air or gas uh, is probably inevitable and as a result of which the these uh, stages if they are run at a somewhat lower speeds and then brought to the control through a control mechanism or control algorithm uh, to uh, steadier or safer uh, speed uh, operating conditions, then you have a better control over the engine uh, operations to ensure that at no stage either the compressor or the turbine gets into any kind of operational problems. So, those are the issues based on which normally spooling is done. So, spooling is typically uh, uh, something which is also related to engine controls. Okay and something which you may have done in other courses and uh, 
those controls would invariably then come into play in control of the spools which are controlled uh, independently, which need to be controlled independently. So, that is about uh, spooling and multi spooling of uh, the engines and multi spooling of turbines as we are talking in today's lecture. Let us take a look at uh, some of the standard engines. What we see here now is a single spool engine with a multi stage turbine. So, we have uh, one spool on which the compressors and the turbines are mounted. Now, as you can see here, the compressor consists of a two stage actual compressor, then a centrifugal compressor, a single stage, which delivers to combustion chamber, which delivers to the turbine and this is a two stage turbine uh, configuration, but both are mounted on a single uh, shaft or spool. So, as a result of which this is a first step towards multi staging of turbine, but it is still on a single spool which uh, is running uh, both set of compressors here. One set is actually ax axial compressor, another is actually a centrifugal compressor and this is a kind of configuration which is uh, very popular typically with turbo shaft engines which are used uh, in, in uh, helicopters and they run of course, at very high uh, rotational speeds or rpms of the order of uh, 25, 30, 40,000 rpms. So, this is a kind of configuration that is used in certain kind of engines and as I mentioned notably in the turbo shaft engines, uh, which does have a um, uh, multi stage arrangement uh, of turbines, but they could possibly be on the single shaft. On the other hand, if you look at uh, this configuration in which you have uh, two uh, multi stage turbines, two stages one is a, a single stage HP, another is a single stage LP. So, you have a two stage configuration, but they are on two different spools. So, one is on one rotor over here and that is on a, a one spool and second one is another rotor over here, which is on a different spool. So, it, this is a multi stage, in fact, indeed a two stage but a two spool turbine layout. This is used, uh, this particular picture is from a military engine, which actually, uh, which means that one spool of that is one stage or HP stage actually supplies power to the HP compressor set, which may be a multi stage compressor and then the LP turbine, which is again a single stage turbine supplies power, the entire power to a LP stage of compressors of this particular engine. So, and as is uh, shown here just uh, as a you know aside, uh, this engine has a little bit of a bypass. So, this is the bleed air or the bypass air that is going past the turbine and not getting into the turbine. So, uh, we can have a two stage turbine which is a two spool turbine and we just saw a two stage turbine which is a single spool turbine. So, uh, those are uh, the possibilities that uh, engine configuration and engine designer would have to uh, be involved with the uh, decision making, uh, whether it should be uh, multi stage, multi spool or uh, whichever way the decision needs to be taken. And this is a, a very large uh, aero engine, which actually is a three spool civil aircraft engine and what is shown here is a very large number of turbines. This is of course, your combustion chamber uh, where the gas is created, the fuel is burned and then this supplies into of course, uh, the HP turbine as we know, the high pressure turbine which uh, produces very large pressure rises and then it goes into another set, which in this particular configuration would be called or is normally called intermediate pressure turbines or IP turbines. Uh, that is a set of about three uh, stages and then finally, it goes through uh, the low pressure turbines or LP turbines. So, it has three uh, spools and uh, this is one shaft, this is the second shaft and this is the third shaft. So, it is a three shaft or three spool uh, civil aircraft engine, 
uh, normally a very large civil aircraft engine um, used for large aircraft. So, uh, there are quite a few of them. They are not in majority as yet. Uh, one of the problems of course, with three spool is that you need to have control over all the three spools. So, you need mechanical and uh, good control system to effect control over uh, all the three spools in a desired manner. So, three spool is uh, actually a very futuristic concept and it is probable in future uh, we might see more and more engines that are uh, three spool engines. Now, if we, ha we are looking at multi staging, one of the first problems that multi staging would throw up is how to create the uh, flow track of this multi stage configuration. We have just seen that you have all kinds of flow track starting from here from the delivery of the combustion chamber and this flow track has to be designed. Okay. Now, we will be talking in a separate lecture on how the blades are designed. Okay. So, design of turbine blades would be taken up in a separate lecture, but today we will just have a quick look at how the this flow track is indeed decided upon or uh, dis, uh, designed, because as you can see this flow track can be something which is which has a strong bearing on the aerodynamics of the flow through the turbines. So, the simplest uh, way of looking at it is it is a part of a cone, which has a subtended angle of twice uh, gamma and then this uh, is decided by the change of height of the rotors and stators. Uh, rotors are called uh, stators are also called nozzles. So, you have nozzle rotor, nozzle rotor. So, it is a multi stage arrangement and this is presumably a H p turbine and this is a L p turbine set and in between there is a little bit of a gap where there is nothing, you know uh, blades. So, we have a, a multi stage uh, simple configuration in which the middle or the mid height remains constant radius. So, it is a constant mean radius uh, flow track design, which is again the simplest and that is what people used to do uh, in the early days of gas turbine design is the simplest thing to actually uh, get into in your design. Now, what it says is that if you take it as a simple uh, part of a cone, then all you have to decide is what the cone angle should be. Okay? And this cone angle can be deduced from uh, the various uh, sizes and the uh, shapes of the turbines. So, we have the shape or uh, size of the actual length of the entire turbine multi stage arrangement. And as you can see here, that is going to come into picture in deciding what this conical angle should be. And then of course, the number of stages uh, would have to be decided as you have done in the previous lectures, the number of stages would have to be decided by certain aerothermodynamic considerations. And once you have decided uh, number of stages, then you have to decide the split of the number of stages into H p and L p and then take some kind of a decision on what should be the gap between H p and L p. And then of course, you have the uh, actual length of each turbine uh, row of blades. So, you have a nozzle actual length, rotor actual length of each stage. So, all of it put together and then of course, you need to decide what should be the gap between the rows of blades that is delta s. So, all of it put together gives you the total s or the length of the entire turbine and h 1 is the first uh, height let us say annulus height okay, uh, of the entry stage and h 2 is the exit height of the entire multi stage configuration. So, when you put all of them together you get a certain uh, tan alpha which can be deduced from this relationship. Somewhere in between we have used a z p which comes out of the z which is number of blades a uh, number of stages and it gives some uh, value of z p which is 2 z minus 1. So, when you put this uh, simple geometric or trigonometric relationship, you get uh, a conical angle tan gamma, uh, which is a straightforward uh, conical shape uh, to encase or uh, 
accommodate this multi stage configuration. So, that is the simplest way of configuring the flow track of a multi stage turbine. Now, the other thing that does happen is flow through the blades is non axial and it uh, you know it goes something like this. It goes through the rotor like this as you can as we have done before there is a change of area from A to B. There is acceleration here then it goes out enters uh, the rotor and again there is a change of area from C to D. So, this is nozzle this is rotor and in a multi stage you have another nozzle then you have another rotor. So, more number of stages you have more you have nozzles and rotors nozzles and rotor and in each of them the flow goes through this kind of turning. So, the gas flow coming from the combustion chamber executes this turn huge turn as we have done in the earlier lectures and then takes another fairly large turn to the rotors does the work or gives up a lot of energy to the rotating shaft gets into the next row of nozzles again takes a huge turn and a large acceleration then gets into the next rotor now takes a huge turn gives up again a lot of energy and makes the uh, rotor rotate. So, that is how the flow proceeds through the individual rows of blades which are nozzle rotor nozzle rotor and more the number of stages you have uh, more the number of nozzles and rotors you have and the flow would proceed along this manner through each of these rows of blades. Now, you have to remember that this happening is varying from root to tip. So, the amount of turning it does in each row of blade whether nozzle or rotor would be actually varying from root to the tip of that particular blade. So, the fundamental aerodynamic parameter uh, actually is variable from root to the tip of each single row of blades. So, if you look at the earlier diagram each of these rows of blades has varying kind of turning and that turning is varying from root to the tip of each blade. Okay. So, this is happening inside a turbine and hence the turbine designer needs to have very good idea about what is happening in terms of aerodynamics or simple gas dynamics and he has to invoke all the aerodynamic and gas dynamic theories to uh, analyze the flow and finalize his design. The actual flow track in a mo modern multi stage also goes through not the kind of simple uh, cone that we looked at. It often goes through this kind of a uh, curved or curvilinear passage. We of course, know from simple continuing, uh, continuing uh, continuity condition that the flow has to uh, have uh, expanding flow track or a diverging flow track. That diverging flow track is likely to be a curved diverging flow track. So, you have a uh, stator, rotor, stator, rotor, stator, rotor etcetera. It may finally, have a, a exiting stator or it may not have. It depends on the uh, turbine designer. Many turbine designers uh, normally may not like to have uh, another stator over here or another exit guide vane if he can. Uh, sometimes the engine design may force him to have a uh, exit guide vane over here as is shown here in S 4. And then of course, it goes into the passage which finally, in case of aero engine would go into the nozzle that creates thrust. So, this curvilinear passage of flow first through the blades like this it comes in goes like this and then goes like this. It is a lot of curvature it executes uh, at a particular radial station if you take a cut and then if you look at sideways it goes through a passage like this. Okay. So, the flow is executing a very complex curvilinear passage through the turbine uh, blades uh, before it is exiting the turbine and going either into exhaust or into the nozzle. So, this needs to be analyzed in great detail before you have some idea uh, about the aerodynamics and the complexity of aerodynamics uh, of the turbine uh, which you require to create turbines of 
reasonably competitive uh, aerodynamic efficiency. So, the multi-stage flow analysis needs to be done. So, you need to do a flow track design, which comes from as I mentioned uh, a, a continuous application of continuity condition, which will keep giving you the values of you know the heights or the annulus areas at each of those stations. So, you can calculate the values of pressures and temperatures of each of those stations after a nozzle, after rotor, after nozzle, after rotor, etcetera, etcetera. And then that will allow you to calculate the density. You also need to take a call on the actual velocity and then if you do that, you apply the continuity condition and then each of these uh, stations, you have your uh, annulus area, which then knowing what the uh, mid or median radius is or median diameter is, you can then calculate the annulus height. So, that is how you get the height of the blades from simple continuity condition application. So, first thing is you need to create the uh, flow track by indeed applying uh, the continuity condition in which you have to take a call, you have to take a decision about what should be your actual velocity at each of those stages and then of course, that will allow you to create a smooth flow track you need to have a smooth flow track. You cannot have a flow track that is exact. We have seen that in case of compressors also. Now, the flow tracks are uh, modern compressor are generally you know curved the way I so showed in the last uh, slide and the flow through the blades is you know uh, curvilinear through the blades. So, this requires application of 3D flow analysis techniques. So, uh, flow is indeed naturally through the turbines highly three dimensional in nature. So, you need to apply three dimensional flow analysis techniques to uh, you know analyze the flow and then uh, finalize your design of the turbines. So, the modern uh, turbines are analyzed indeed through uh, 3D flow analysis techniques and then you need to apply 3D CFD techniques. Uh, analytical uh, techniques that are available or whatever is made available to you. Uh, simple to dimensional analysis uh, would fall short of the requirements of modern turbine design. So, uh, 3D analytical techniques would need to be adopted uh, very rigorously uh, for modern turbine design. So, this is a look at uh, the modern uh, you know uh, multi stage multi spool turbine in which you have a hp which itself is a multi stage affair and then you have a lp which again is another multi stage affair so and in between as you can see there is a large uh, inter spool duct or gap which is created during which as you can see the flow actually has moved from a, a median radius which was here a lower radius, it has moved to a higher median radius and it has continuously moved to a higher uh, mid radius, which of course, tells you very quickly that this designer wanted to up continuously upgrade his value of u or u mean of each turbine. As you know, the rotating speed gives you the uh, blade speed and that blade speed if you can upgrade it to higher values. So, the blade speed here uh, could be much higher than the blade speed here and this whole spool is running at the same speed. So, uh, the average blade speed here is substantially here. In fact, as you can see in this particular picture, the mean here is well above the tip here. Okay? So, the u mean here is substantially higher and that was indeed the intention of this particular designer. On the other hand, in HP, where the mean radius here is much lower, substantially lower than even the first stage over here. However, the HP turbines normally run at much higher RPM, uh, as we have discussed before. And as a result, it is entirely possible that the blade speed of HP turbines uh, is at least of the same order as the blade speed of LP turbine, the last LP turbine. Okay, uh, if not actually uh, a little higher. So, as I mentioned, the two spools run at 
substantially or significantly different rotating speeds in which case the mean speed of the last turbine and the mean speed of the first turbine may actually be almost of the same order even though they are at a different radial setting. So, that is how the uh, engine designer configures the entire uh, multi stage and multi spool turbine. One of the things which I mentioned is you need to do uh, compressor turbine matching and so this is just a very quick uh, you know uh, block diagram matching. If you have a single spool you have to match this compressor with this turbine. If you have two spool uh, uh, engine you have to match this compressor with this turbine and then the H p compressor with H p turbine. So, this is your H p spool, this is your L p spool okay, and this is your intermediate that is station 1 2 between L p and H p and 3 4 is the intermediate uh, station between H p and L p turbine. So, this is the how the spooling is normally to be done in a overall gas turbine uh, environment. Now, if you have a two spool high bypass turbofan, what happens is uh, one spool that is the H p compressor and the H p turbine spool would remain as we saw in the last one, whereas the L p turbine spool would end up running a set of L p compressors and a very large uh, fan which is part of the turbofan configuration which produces as you know a uh, cold thrust. So, the LP turbine has a lot of jobs to do and as a result of which it would actually be supplying a large amount of aggregate shaft power to the combination of this fan and compressor. One can probably make a guess that this is what this particular uh, turbine is doing. This large turbine is uh, you know it has two, one, two, three, four stages of turbines they are essentially supplying power to a combination of compressor and a large fan in a turbofan configuration. Now, the single pool spool power that is produced by the turbine has to be matched with that of the compressor. Now, this is the work matching between this is the left hand side is the compressor work, right hand side is the uh, turbine work and this is what uh, actually gives you the uh, finally, the matched compressor turbine configuration. Whereas, if you have a two spool configuration, the matching has to be done uh, uh, spool wise. So, H p turbine compressor has to match with the H p turbine uh, uh, work. Uh, K H p uh, is uh, uh, a parameter that has been created essentially a thermodynamic parameter to stand for this pressure ratio. We saw that in the earlier one also, which is nothing but a parameter that takes care of the uh, temperature ratio across the turbine. So, uh, basically it is a work matching between the turbine and the compressor which gives rise to the H p uh, balanced matched turbine compressor configuration. Then you have to do the same thing separately for L p. So, you have to match the work done by the uh, compressor and the turbine and you get again uh, another uh, a matching parameter K L p as you got earlier in case of K H p. So, uh, this uh, gives you this is called often a matching parameter and this finally, gives you the matched values of compressor and turbine uh, work done. From this matching you can actually then figure out what are the matched values of compressor and turbine pressure ratios at that matched design point. So, that matched point is indeed the design point and at that design point you from here you can find out what is the matched compression ratio and what is the matched turbine expansion ratio for which the compressor L p H p and then turbine H p L p would have to be designed separately by the compressor designers and by the turbine designers. So, this is how the configuration is finally, arrived at before the blade design is indeed taken up. So, this matching is an essential part of uh, compressor turbine design and this has to be done before you actually embark on compressor or turbine design. Just to take a look at the uh, fact that if you have a multi stage uh, turbine, 
you have to match those two spools. So, we were talking about compressor turbine matching, you have to match the two spools. So, you have to match HP turbine with LP turbine. Now, this graph gives you an idea what happens when you have a matched HP and LP turbine. This is post facto that means, after they have been designed and their characteristic maps have been created. So, this is your HP turbine characteristic uh, uh, you know this uh, solid line and then this is the exit of the characteristic. This we normally give it by the you know entry characteristic, but you can draw an exit characteristic. So, let us say this is your design operating point, which you can now extend to this uh, exit characteristic point of the HP turbine and then from there you can proceed from here onto the LP turbine and this is your LP turbine characteristic on the basis of its entry conditions and you get this characteristic point on the LP turbine, which now as you can see is a good operating point, because this flat zone over here and indeed this flat zone over there as you have discussed in the earlier lectures actually correspond to choked flow condition that is a steady turbine operating condition. And then of course, you can you know extend that to the exit condition of the turbine LP turbine which you may like to extend later on to matching with the uh, nozzle if it is an aero engine okay? or if, if there is another stage after this. Supposing this is IP turbine, you have to match that with the LP turbine. So, you can extend this to whatever the component is, the, is following okay? and then uh, try to do the matching on this characteristic map. So, this is how the two spools of the turbines need to be matched uh, before you have set upon the detailed design of the turbine. This is just a quick look at what could be a, a possible three spool high bypass turbofan engine. As you can see here, we have three spools. This is the innermost spool of HP compressor and HP turbine in between of course, you have the combustion chamber. And then you have the intermediate spool of intermediate turbine, which runs the intermediate compressors. So, the compressors here are separated from the turbine uh, from the big fan and the big fan is independently run by another set of turbines LP turbines, which are the outermost turbines. So, outermost turbines run the outermost compressor or the big fan and the intermediate ones run themselves and the uh, innermost uh, compressor and turbine run each other. So, this is how the three spool configuration is typically uh, made and we saw a three spool engine a little earlier, a picture of which uh, indeed is based on this kind of uh, spooling. So, we can say that the compressor turbine uh, spool by spool matching needs to be done very meticulously and this needs to be augmented in actual operation by various engine control systems. So, more spools you have more uh, complicated com control systems you would need to create. So, this is and of course, mechanically you are making the system more and more complex. So, this is something which the engine designers would have to decide. So, there are some companies who are comfortable going to three spool they are comfortable with the mechanical complexity and the control system complexity, whereas some others are more comfortable with the two spool configuration and are finding various two spool variants to cater to large engine requirements. So, it is up to the particular company to decide what they are comfortable with in terms of the state of art of technology. So, you need to do all the things matching uh, of compressor turbine matching between the spools before you have a whole multi spool multi stage arrangement of the entire engine. So, this is how multi staging and multi spooling is indeed done. In the next class, we will be talking then about 3 D flow theories for turbine blade. As we know, as we have just seen, you have to have good 3 D flow theories. So, we will be talking about the 3 D flow theories in the next lecture in relation to axial flow turbines.